Hey, welcome to the Reagan Farm YouTube channel. I'm Ashley, and today something very exciting has happened. We have received some of my first flower seeds for the season that we will be planting, and they came from Florette Flowers in Washington State. And they've packaged them quite well because I can't get into them. Okay, so a little backstory on Florette. Um, some of you may not know, but I am actually doing a workshop for Florette. Um, I just started about a week and a half ago. Um, it is a six week course and they go a little bit in depth about flower farming and marketing and just going to teach us a lot of the things that we really need to learn for this season. Um, so hopefully that goes well and we will do a review on that later to let you know how successful I think that was and if it was worth the investment. Um, I did get a partial scholarship for the workshop, which was extremely helpful. Um, so again, we'll touch on that later in the season to let you know how it went. Um, they grow amazing flowers at Florette. She really has mastered the art of growing cut flowers and she's been doing it um, over a decade now. And they just started doing a seed shop, which is how we were able to get some flowers. They grow some of the varieties that you can find at other major seed retailers. However, she breeds a lot of her flowers and makes some of her own varieties. So let's dig in and see what I got. So I've got everything bundled up. We got quite a bit of seeds. Um, I'm really excited about these because we picked the varieties that are not readily available at the other seed stores um, because we wanted the uniqueness that she has bred into the flowers herself. These are pretty exciting. And we'll also go back into later showing you how well they germinated, what kinds of flowers we got out of them, how hardy they were, and we'll compare them to some of the other seed catalog flowers that we receive and see which ones bloom better and if it was worth the investment of purchasing from Florette. So if you haven't already, please subscribe so that you can follow along and see exactly how our flowers turn out. The first thing I notice is the packaging. Um, these packages look really great. They have the common name for each of the flowers as well as the Latin name for each of them or the species. Um, they also have the color or the variety of the flower. Um, which is really nice. These are sweet peas. Uh, we did a lot of sweet peas in this order because she grows some amazing varieties of sweet peas that she has bred. And you cannot find a lot of these colors from other seed catalogs. So the hopes for these sweet peas is that we will get some really beautiful flowers, but we will also let them go to seed at the end of the season. And hopefully end up with 40 to 50 seeds per plant, which we can in turn plant next winter, late winter, early spring for a new crop without having to purchase any additional seeds. So we're hoping that these will actually save us money for next growing season. Um, we have multiple varieties here. Each of these packets comes with about 10 seeds per package, um, which is kind of low. But like I said, these are really beautiful colors that you can't really find anywhere else. Um, then we also have some other things. We've got some Sweet William, which is a great filler flower, um, comes in a lot of different colors. This is a mix in it predominantly has reds and pinks and purples. Um, we have some yarrow, which is, this is another mix. These are a great filler flower as well. You can do them uh, fresh or dried. We have some pincushion flowers, also known as scabiosa, and they are a filler flower. We have some Queen Anne's lace varieties. I got two varieties. I got a green mist, which is a beautiful, almost lime green and then also a Queen of Africa, which is more of a white. These look beautiful, tucked into summer bouquets. Um, we got some quinoa, which you probably know as 
the food that you eat, but um, it's also a great filler flower. We got lots of poppy varieties um, in this order. She has some beautiful poppy varieties as well. These will come earlier in the season and they're just really pretty focal flowers that you can add into your bouquets. We've got an amazing gray, which is kind of like a lavender gray color, and then a mother of pearl, which is a beautiful white poppy. Um, we've got a Pandora, which is a beautiful pink shade. Um, we've got some more filler flower here. This is a status, and it's a sunset mix, which will give us a lot of different colors. Um, straw flower is another beautiful filler flower that you can use. It's very textural. It has kind of paper-like blooms that make lots of sounds when you touch them. They sound like straw, which is how they got their name. Um, we've got some more sweet peas here. This, uh, this variety is a very unique, dark, almost purple shade. So like I said, lots of sweet peas. We will have a lot of sweet peas in our future. If you haven't experienced sweet peas firsthand, they smell incredible. They have very delicate, almost romantic looking blooms and they just smell of heaven. Um, we've got some black eyed Susans, which are also known as Rubecchia. These look very much like miniature sunflowers. This is a Sahara mix, and it has some beautiful shades of maroons and bronze and orange and yellows. We, I really can't wait to see how those turn out. Um, and we have some Celosia. These are fillers as well, and there's a lot of different varieties. This one is a rainbow sherbet mix, which will have very feathery type blooms. And then my favorite that we ordered, and I'm super excited to grow these, um, these are dahlia seeds, which typically you don't grow a dahlia from a seed. You grow them from a tuber, which you would plant in the ground in the fall and overwinter them. And then they'll come up in the spring. And every year you know exactly what they're going to look like because you grow a tuber from a mother plant. When you grow dahlias from seeds, you never know what variety you're going to get. So these are called Bee's Choice Mix, and she grows them in a greenhouse with the bees inside the greenhouse with the flowers, and the bees pollinate the flowers, and they create these wonderful seeds, and you just, you don't know. They're a variety, and we will see what we're going to get from them. Look for a video later that's going to show exactly what varieties we got from these seeds. Um, growing dahlia tubers can be quite an investment. They can be very expensive. Um, the perk with those is they will come back year after year. Um, but starting from seed is a great and expensive option that you can use to get beautiful flowers. So we got four packs of those. Um, there's about 25 seeds per pack. So we'll see. I'll let you know what we end up with. We'll show them to you later. Another great filler flower we got is Globe Amaranth. These turn into little balls at the top of the florets and they come in beautiful bright pinks and oranges and just make amazing textural additions to bouquets. Godetia, that's another one we got. This is a salmon colored flower. It's more often used as a filler flower, but it's very stunning to look at. We got marigolds. These are a, a very miniature variety of marigolds that I'm super excited to be trying out this year. We grow marigolds for our chickens a lot of times, but we've never grown this miniature variety. So I'm very excited to see what we actually get from these. We got two varieties of phlox. These are Dolce de Leche and a whipped cream. Um, they're both shades of white. The Dolce de Leche is a more creamy antique white, whereas the whipped cream is more of a natural white. These will be great in bouquets. They would be good for wedding work, things like that. Um, blushing lanterns, another filler flower. These have beautiful little pods that grow at the ends. 
of the stalks and they make really nice additions. Um, poor man's orchid, these look almost like miniature orchids. They grow in shades of pinks and purples and there's multiple per stem. We have a flowering tobacco. This one is a peach color and it's very pretty. I cannot wait to see what this one looks like in real life. Um, the pictures I'm sure did not do it justice, but they were still gorgeous. We got two of these um, penny crests. Penny crest is more of a foliage. It's a green and it's a, it's a very nice, almost lime color. It just works really well in bouquets. Um, we have a couple more Celosia. Um, varieties. We've got a super crust mix, which um, is almost like a coxcomb. It's bunches at the top. It looks a little bit different than the feathery variety. Um, and then we've got the pink champagne, which is one of the more feathery, plumy varieties that we will have. Um, more sweet peas, of course, because you can never have enough of those. Chloranthus sweet pea. I have never seen anything like it. This is a lime green sweet pea. I've seen a lot of pinks and purples and reds and whites, um, but lime green is something completely new. So I can't wait to see how this one looks when it grows. So more sweet peas. We've got Elizabeth. This is almost a neon pink sweet pea variety. And then a Porlock. This one is almost a burgundy wine color um, that is just absolutely stunning. Can't wait to see that one. We also have a couple varieties of carnations, which I'm super excited about as well. You probably know carnations from cheap flower bouquets and um, corsages and prom and things like that. Um, these carnations, however, are different. Most carnations that you buy from the store don't have a lot of smell to them, but these are supposed to be very strong scented. They smell like baking and cloves and just, I can't wait to see how they turn out. We've got a couple varieties. We've got an orange sherbet, which is a pretty coral color. We've got this variety, which is very beautiful white. And then we have a bright pink as well. So cannot wait to see how these turn out. I ordered one variety of stock from Florette. I ordered several varieties from other vendors, but this buttercream is something I didn't see somewhere else. It looks like it sounds. It's buttercream. It's off-white and they grow in long stems that have multiple flowers on the top. They look beautiful in bouquets. And then we have more poppies. Poppies are very popular. Um, so we've got couple more varieties of them. We have an Iceland poppy. These all grow at different times in the season, which is why we got so many different varieties. Um, some more Shirley poppies. And then we've got a California poppy. This one is called Thai Silk Apple Blossom, and they are very flowy, very romantic looking. They're pinks and oranges and corals. Um, so I can't wait to see how these look. And then we have these bread seed poppies. These produce a beautiful full flower. I got two of pink, a pink peony and a lilac peony, um, which is what they sound like, a bright pink color and then a light purple. Um, the nice thing about these is that after the flowers go away, they make these beautiful seed pods, which make sounds and add texture to bouquets. So if you can't use all of the flowers right away, you can dry them and make these seed pods that you can use all the way through the winter season in bouquets. Having these spread out all over the table and looking at them seems almost daunting. There is a lot of work that we have to do. I tried to order varieties that would give us time to properly prep the soil for the garden. Um, that is the most important step to growing beautiful flowers or vegetables. We have a lot of work to get the soil ready and get the garden space ready for these seeds. Um, so we went with a lot of varieties that will be more late spring or summer because we wanted that time to be able to get everything ready where it needs to be. 
We do have a lot of work as far as getting seedlings started. So within the next few weeks, we will start planting some of our seeds and putting them under grow lights so that we can get things ready to go when the garden is ready to be planted. We will also be doing succession planting on a lot of these varieties so that we can have blooms throughout the entire season. And if you're not sure what succession planting is, we'll go in depth a little bit more about that in a later video as well. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Comment below if there is any varieties that you're most excited about seeing, if there's any varieties that you want us to go in more depth about, or if there's something that you would like us to grow. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.